Oh, jeez. This is not you? going well. Yeah, totally Unless this is not try and hope for another here. fumble. That's the only thing I can think of. Unless you want to talk on. loud. I mean, we're on a I weird mean, setup. Talking. No, am I not loud enough? Can you hear on there? Can you Barely. hear me now? Now I can hear you. But back there, I can't. Because they're like panning out. Yeah, I saw that. Beyonce almost fell. Oh, was that when she did that little she, hop thing? She, yeah. <laughs> when she like got down on the ground. Beyonce? Yeah. yeah. She During did like this weird show? like hop. She was in the halftime show? Her and Bruno and Coldplay. Yeah. It was a All of them? Yes. Yeah, it was a what great, the fuck? It was a it great, was a great mashup. It was wonderful. Oh, I missed that. It was good. It was perfect. Beyonce almost fell. Beyonce wore the same out, upper half outfit of Michael Jackson. Are we rolling? Oh, we're <coughs> Bitch, how am I be? Is you rolling? <laughs> Bitch, how am I be? Hey. Hey, hi, hello. What are you up to? This is the Aloha Broha podcast. I'm one of your hosts, John Cozy. With me, as always, is Science Ben. What's up? Cheeks. Hey. And our guest today, for the third time ever, third I time's a charm. Third like, leg's a charm. Third time. Uh, third, yeah, third. third time's a charm. Third time? Yeah. Third time. It's Mr. Jujove himself. Jujove? Yes. I was going to say TJ. Yeah, no. I was going to say TJ. Wonka. TJ. Wonka. Wonka, Wonka. Man. Yeah, and, and in the far distance, we have Tron. Hi. So this po- we are we are podcasting from inside Volcano Cafe, where we were gonna do a little bit of promotion, some surprise promotion, and have uh, Tron on and TJ on, and we're, uh, we're gonna talk about some vaping stuff. But turns out, while he's at work. He can't leave from behind the counter. I thought, so, that, was, I thought that was gonna be obvious. That's why I was like, I didn't know that. I thought that like over? if there was no one in here, he could chill for a little bit. Oh. So I didn't realize that. So instead, it's just us. Maybe in. that's why you don't have a job. Fuck you. <laughs> don't Fuck you in the face. <laughs> in like both nostrils. Like I will grow a second dick to both the double fuck your nose. Jesus Christ. That's all. Like, that's fucked up. <laughs> I have the visual in my head. It's not that funny for me. Like, it would be funny if it was somebody else, but... If there was two people fucking each national? Wait, what do you mean? Explain like, me. one two person people, on... one. There's like, two people. No, but see, so the, one person has two dicks, on, you know, and, and then if another com- person comes in to play, would he have Sunday two dicks right as now, well? No, no, I'm saying... You're, you're, you're saying the visual wasn't pleasant, so I was saying, would it be better if it was two different people... Totally one fucking each nostril. Still open. It would be less Heather's weird than one person, than one person with, with two dicks. Yeah, I don't know yeah. how that's going. Would it matter if the double dicks are stacked right vertically now, or horizontally? Those, well, uh, see, if it would, see, then it would change the position that he would have to fuck my nose. Because if they were like, so like if they were vertical, <laughs> he'd have to be like, sucks yeah. he would have to be horizontal. Yeah, so it's you know, so you're either like perpendicular or like a cross. Like, what do you have to say? So here's a question. Here's a question. Are you horizontal while he's fucking you standing up? Like or is he horizontal like, while I, I you're standing up or here, sitting like, down? I don't know, then you'd have to determine whether my head was pointing like north This is a complete head. mess right now. Because <laughs> she is having a completely different conversation. Well, she's into fucking being like the best football team in this season Right, but we're just all right talking now. over each other. And they're like, this is the most confusing I was wondering why she was talking. Podcast ever. Because I'm like sitting here. I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay. we're having a serious discussion about yeah, fucking really? people in the nose yeah. with double dicks. <laughs> yeah, but we're, jeez, do you not know how, we've been doing this a long time. <laughs> like, you gotta try point. not to talk over each other. And you're just going off on a yeah, game I was like wondering what none that, of like, us care I was wondering about. what the little, like, <laughs> it's loud and clear. Like, in my ears, yeah. I'm the, oh, by the way, I'm the only one monitoring this episode because we don't have our individual mic. Do not want to talk just... about double dicks going into another No, I don't want to hear about that. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll leave that for another another time, I guess. We'll have to pick that, that conversation back up. Yeah. Should we just restart? <laughs> no, we've gone too far. We've gone we've too gone far. Too far. I think it's hilarious. I, I, wanna, I want to apologize now. I want to know what she was Sorry. talking about. The Super, the Super Bowl. Okay, no, none of so, us give a shit about so it. So that's, a, that's no, another exactly. thing. So I know that me and... Like, are you just going to narrate the... So, <laughs> another thing, <laughs> another thing for our listeners, we're doing this while the fourth quarter of the Super Bowl is happening, and Denver is whooping everyone's the ass. The punch oh, yeah. I don't give a shit. I'm the only person out of my friends that was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna bet on Denver." Everyone else went Panthers, and Denver is way ahead, and there's five minutes left. So, I want to know one thing. Qua. While we were talking about the double dig dude thing. 
Who was Sheik talking to? I was talking to the mic. DJ apparently. Oh, uh, in the mic. She was, <laughs> she was like everybody. leaning in and talking, talking into the mic. Everybody. I was talking to everybody. And it was just talking <laughs> over our <laughs> really interesting double dick they, person they, fucking your nose conversation. Like, and she's still again. talking <laughs> over me. <laughs> I'm just here, guys. I'm not even saying a damn thing. <laughs> I don't guest. It's like, Good job. Why did, <laughs> at, least, at least the guest knows not to talk over this a conversation. Such a train wreck. <laughs> oh, wow. See, this is what happened. We're not. You know, we this, tried is to pull a this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. What's up? Tried to pull a Nerdist. We tried to pull a Nerdist and record on the Super Bowl because that was their very first episode was done on the Super Bowl in 2010. And okay, well, here's what we're gonna do. Okay. We're gonna start over again. We're gonna leave everything <laughs> that came before that. Oh, why are you so, so the listeners are just like. What? I just want to listen to it after. If it sucks, then I'll cut it out. Okay. But it. Po- if it makes me giggle, giggle just even a little bit, <laughs> we're gonna laugh. To we're there. gonna laugh. I, I'm apologizing I'm, right now I'm to sorry. the listeners. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Ben, I'm, I apologize. <laughs> it's yeah. funny. I don't know why you're we apologizing. No, I apologize for interrupting, but I was, me being the person I am, I was like, look, maybe we can have another conversation and let's see if people can keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, There's a cruel joke on our listeners. Oh, uh, just this you jumble of words. Like, wow. I, right it, in the beginning. I thought it was entertaining how you guys were talking about Posey getting dicks up to up his nose, and like I'm talking about the Super Bowl. I thought that was funny. And you guys. I mean, it was, but it was just like way, I'm just totally, wondering if, if you totally can understand. I totally left left the Super Bowl party to go record this podcast, so I'm gonna yeah make the most of it. I think it was funny. I thought I was laughing the whole time. Hey, hi, hello. What are you up to? This what? is the Aloha Bruja <laughs> podcast. I am one of your hosts, Science Ben, and with me as always is Cozy. What's up? Sheikha Sheik. What the fuck did this happen? <laughs> now we're throwing her off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and our guest this today on this Super Bowl Sunday is Jude Jove, also known as Wonka or TJ, friend of ours, part of Astronauts by Night. What? Can barely be heard on the mic. Really? What? No, really? No. Huh? 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 So, okay. but yeah, so we're trying this take two. Literally, <laughs> you can go and hear this later somewhere. So we are again. We are at Volcano Cafe. Uh, we were we're on a completely mobile setup. We don't even have our individual mics. We're recording solely off of the the mics that come with the Zoom that we use. Uh, and again, the, we're at Volcano Cafe where the people working here are watching the game. So that's what you hear in the background. Uh, one of the people working here was supposed to be a guest today. And then I found out that he's not allowed to leave behind the counter, even if there's no customers in here. So now we just have to compete with that. <laughs> oh, this is a train wreck of an episode. I am sorry, listeners. <laughs> It's your fucking idea, bro. I know. It was a bad idea. And I apologize. I had good intentions. It was going to be fun, you know? Yeah, we were going to surprise Tron. It's definitely funny, but is it understandable to anyone else but us? You're thinking too hard right now. You're thinking too hard right now. You should watch this in a couple days. It'll be, it'll be fine, man. With the, with my my um, my graceful editing skills. Yes. <laughs> you know, this podcast is going to be way more pleasant to hear. Yeah, definitely. Let's hope so. <laughs> so, so anyway. this episode's going to be a complete mess. You can thank me for that and go ahead and send all your hate mail to me. Aloha, bro, podcast at gmail.com. Address it to <laughs> at Science Ben, or <laughs> to Science Ben. Yeah. And uh, I'll make sure to get all your hate and vitriol. You know what? I really hope someone does send us their hate and vitriol, because at least, because I mean, like, other than Dan... <laughs> no one says shit to us. You'll have something to talk about. The next I know. Time it's like, podcast. oh, thank I mean, you for telling a, me you hated this. There's been a, there's been a couple of YouTube comments where like, oh, dope podcast, bro. You know, cool. YouTube, and they've all been positive. Never, not, not a dislike that's a, at all. That's a good thing. Why, yeah. why, why are you guys asking for? A- and by the way, I think I mentioned this before on a previous episode, but we won Super CW's best podcast of 2015. Woo-hoo. Well, our sister podcast did. Well, the from Green what Leaf I was Check, told, yeah. Green Leaf Check as a network. So as a network, day. yeah. So we are a part of the Green Leaf Check network. So, yeah. So, yeah. If you don't know who Super CW is, she is a, a Hawaii local 
uh, nightlife guide, if you will. Mm-hmm. And That's about right. DJ. Yeah, She's a DJ. Yeah, an excellent DJ. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just beat cancer, correct? Or is she still? I believe so. Wow. I'm not sure. Still battling, I think. Is, is it still battling? Yeah. Saw her last night. Yeah. I think she's, thing, yeah. I think she's yeah. in Daniel remission. Himself. I think she's in remission. So I, I don't By know. By the way, you're yeah, a so huge CW's inspiration. in remission. She's such a huge inspiration. Yeah, she, oh, yeah. she, she built her, her empire from nothing. And she is the queen of nightlife out here for sure and she is fantastic we're actually going to try and get her on this podcast in the not too distant future have her talk about all kinds of stuff i try to get her and daniel on the podcast because i know they have like a non-profit going on that's supposed to be like help you support i don't know the fight against cancer i think yeah Yeah. talk about cancer we all get to learn some stuff she's a huge inspiration so, <clears throat> so the Super Bowl is going on right now. Uh, Denver is still rocking Carolina. Listeners, I'm sorry if I like yell or anything because I am partly watching the game as well. Just, I just wanted to throw that out there. So if I just fucking yell for nothing, okay. And that looks <laughs> like, like another touchdown for Denver. Yeah. With three minutes and eight seconds to go. That's amazing. That is amazing. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah, the scoreboard just went up to 22. I feel so bad for all you Panther fucking And the best right part now, about this like, whole thing was literally all of my friends, literally everyone that I know that was caring about this game was like, yeah, we're going to vote for the Panthers. We're going to bet on the Panthers. And I was like, you know what? I'm a Dolphins fan, and I don't give a shit about football, so I'm going to go with AFC and go with the Broncos. Well, and sure enough, I should have put money on it. There's a lot of things happening with this fucking Do you know what the odds were for... The pan or for the uh, the Panthers to win, like what were the odds on Broncos? Uh, it was, it was, they were it's like forty to one or something. Yeah, Holy yeah. shit! So like if I put a hundred bucks down, I would have four thousand dollars. I should have dropped a hundred dollars on this game. You would have. And I would have got four thousand dollars. I could have fucking paid off my bills. <laughs> I could have like paid off a credit card. That's the thing about yeah. gambling. Because it gets pretty much over, right? Can you gamble hundred dollars? Yeah, I could have afforded it too. Exactly. So yeah, I, 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 I like I just got my tax return back. I got a little bit of money that I could have. I could have easily dropped a hundred or two hundred bucks and walked away with eight grand, I'm four just, to eight grand. No. I'm just saying, this this could be just another ring for Peter Manning, and I think he deserves it. I think he deserves it. I I agree with you. I, th- I wasn't looking that's at Tron you. in like, the background. Yeah, that's Tron in the background. He's working. He can't leave the counter, so <laughs> he's just gonna yell at us every yeah. once in a while. You'll get to hear By him way, in the who distance. Did you go for? Who did you go for? Panthers. You're, 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 I just pointing, said that. You're, pointing, you're pointing at. The, I just want him to see it, so if the listeners can pick it up. I just said literally all of my friends went for the Panthers. I'm the only one that I know that went for the Broncos. You know, literally, is that like all your friends? Like all? Yes, literally, no, not figuratively. I don't misuse the word literally. <laughs> Literally, everyone I know that cared about this game went for the Panthers, except for me. It's science fan. What do you mean? Yeah. It's, okay, you know what? <laughs> I sound corrected. I'm sorry. I, Why would I say literally when I meant figuratively? I don't know. Some girls do it all the fucking time. I'm Am I a girl? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. But, um, that sounded really <laughs> sexist. That sounded really sexist. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> here behind that counter and I care about your job <laughs> I want you to <laughs> no so anyway I uh, on non-football news I just got done watching uh, start the entirety of Star Trek The Next Generation on Netflix that's another thing I don't care about yeah <laughs> and I started and I started so, this, like Star Trek The Next Generation is actually is really good I really enjoyed is it, it? Oh, like, I got really into it yeah, if I can take it the off, like, first like season or two is not that great, but once you hit like season four, it okay. starts getting some really amazing episodes. I think I eat if I eat enough edibles and like I don't have the strength or the will to um, change the channel or something, then maybe I will sit down and watch it. I'll just have to have like a high dose of um, marijuana. Well, the other thing that I've been watching a ton of is like I watched all the Jackie Chan films that were on Netflix. Yes, what's your favorite one out of uh, all of them? Out of the ones on Netflix? Yes. Rumble in the Bronx. Yeah. Actually, Drunken yeah. Master. I but just because I was a huge fan of Drunken Master back in the day, and I know that's it's actually his second Drunken Boxing film, but everyone it's the first one that was really introduced heavily in America. Yeah. But it was really good. I was just a big fan of that particular film back when it first came out yeah. in America. <clears throat> this first, but Rumble in the Bronx is also. What was the first Drunken Master one called? 
Uh, it was. It was also. I think it was just called Drunken, Drunken Master. Master. Yeah. Okay. So but there's it that was... and Snake and Eagle Shadow. Yeah. Yeah. I used to have all of his DVDs, man. I was a big fucking kung fu DVD collector, which I sold my entire collection for money because I needed it. Yeah. Do you hear they're making a TV series? Huh? Do you hear they're making a Rush Hour TV series? Yes. I did I not know that. that. Yeah. We do. Okay, uh, it's not, not the same either. cast. Yeah, totally not the same cast. Well, no duh, because I doubt that. Uh, they're too old. No. Yeah, like it's. So it's basically. It's gonna, well, we know it's gonna. No. Is it gonna be a black guy and a Chinese guy? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So it's gonna be a Close series. Close enough. Close <laughs> enough. <laughs> it's definitely gonna be a series of how they are in LA. I'm guessing during their time in LA. I just don't think anyone can do Chris Tucker except Chris Tucker. Nope. Well, no, you no. know. I don't think I'm, everybody can do Jackie Chan except Jackie Chan. Yeah, he has a very particular type of comedic feel to him. I don't know any other. Well, oh, actually, well, the comedy, maybe Stephen Chow. You know, he has maybe. a comedy element to Kung Fu. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't see Stephen Chow, like, jumping through ladders and <laughs> windows and cars and shit. Oh, yeah, the thing with Jackie Chow is, like, all his own stunts. Like, he's got the balls. Yeah, like, like I was watching um, Police Story. Yeah. Uh, and they were showing, like, like how in back of every Jackie Chan movie there's the the outtakes and the the, the failed stunts and is shit. that the one where he broke his like fractured his skull yeah. oh no but he fucking shattered his foot uh, and so for like the last half of the movie oh, he's like, he has this huge cast yeah uh and they cut open a shoe and glued it on top of the cast to make it look like a shoe <laughs> it was fucking incredible and, like, you don't notice it anywhere in the film, even though, like, literally half of the stunts that he did, he was in this giant fucking foot cast. Yeah. It's incredible. And there's, like, there's some crazy-ass stunts on there, like a helicopter over with a rope ladder over a fucking train, and the rope ladder gets caught, so the helicopter has to, like, whoa. Yeah. And there's a point where, like, there's, like he's, they swing the rope ladder at a building to try and knock Jackie Chan off, and he has to climb up just in time to not get hit by the fucking building. Yeah. Like, there's some crazy-ass shit that happens yeah, yeah. in that movie. I say, yeah, I say Rumble in the Bronx is my number one. Number two would either be... Fuck, what's the one with Michelle Yeoh? Uh, is that Police Story? I think, I think so. Police Story, right? Yeah, 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 it's Police, police story. story. and then Mr. Nice Guy. Oh, Mr. Nice Guy is fucking oh, great. Nice, yeah. yeah. I wish that was on Netflix. Yeah. I also, like, I, I can't remember what the, the movie was, but there's one where... There's a double-decker bus coming down a hill, yeah. and he has to stand there with his hand out, and it stops, like, inches from his face. Yeah. I don't remember which... Like, he was holding a gun, and it stops right in front of the gun, and, like, guy's supposed to, like, fly out of the fucking thing in front of him. I don't remember what movie that was, though. Opera, well, what was he? Where was he? He was... Well, it was a cop, it was, but it wasn't... Oh, no, no, no. I watched Super... That was Police Story. Super I watched Cop. Super, Super Cop. Cop. Yeah. yeah Super Cop. I watched Super Cop, because that's what's on Netflix, is Super Cop. And I think Super Cop's the one with Michelle Yeoh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And Police Story... Who's still a fox, there is, by the way. Police Story 4 is on yeah. Netflix. That one's kind of, like, darker. Yeah, but that one's, like, super dark, and there's not yeah. very many stunts. Yeah. I tried to watch it. I watched, like, the first hour, and I was like, oh, no, this isn't Yeah, I got I, through, like, the first half an hour. This isn't what I think of a Jackie Chan movie to be. Yeah, it's a whole lot more of a drama. It's like, it has something to do with his daughter, and, yeah, it was just weird. There's a, I think this month, there's going to be the sequel to um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. There's a coming sequel out on coming it. out? Yeah, oh, it's like a Netflix God. original. Oh, shit. It's like, I think the only returning cast member is Michelle Yeoh. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I wonder what, yeah, I wonder what the story yeah, is. Yeah, I wonder what they'll do with it. Should be interesting. So, you, into, you into Kung Fu movie sheet? Um, I'm not into it as I should be, but I do watch them. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean? As you should be? Because I like I like the concept of like kung fu movies. I, I like the storyline of it. I do. I enjoy watching them. Um, like I've watched Ip Man, and I keep up with that. Have but. you seen the Once Upon a Time in China series? There's like Jet Li's movies where he plays, no, I haven't. He plays Wong Fei Hung in all of them. I think I've seen like one or two of them, but I haven't seen the whole thing. Okay, but you know the whole like like legend of Wong Fei Hung and yeah. shit. He's uh, if you've seen Iron Monkey, he's the little kid. Yeah. It grows up, and then these movies were about Wong, <laughs> Wong Fei Hong when he was an adult. And there was one in the third movie. There's this scene in the third movie where he 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 has a fight with fucking Donnie Yen. 
Oh, shit. Donnie Yen on top of these. I think uh, that's the one I've seen. Yeah, that's the third one where they're, they're fighting on top like the little <laughs> the poles and shit. Yeah. Yeah. That was like one of the Yeah, I remember epic. that one. That was like my favorite. One of, one of my favorite kung fu movies that is like off brand, if you will, like the, the ones that don't have characters that most people in America know yeah. is uh, The Flying Guillotine. I've seen that one. There was that was like a series of that like I, I didn't realize it until much later. But there's guillotine. like four flying guillotine movies. I've only seen the one on Netflix. Yeah, whatever that one is. Well, like that one and like um, I didn't get super Japanese, into it though. There's a Japanese movie, um, The Blind Swordsman. Yeah, that one's got a fuck ton of sequels too that I didn't know yeah. about. Uh, Zatoichi. Yeah, Zatoichi, The Blind Swordsman. He that one has like there's like eight of those fucking yeah. movies and I didn't I was like holy shit I didn't know there was that many. There's so much good. Oh man, those those samurai flicks are dope too. Like my favorite one that I've seen recently uh -huh. was the remake of Harakiri. Oh, I haven't seen Have that you one. Seen that? No. Fuck, you gotta see it. It has like the the illest, most tense fucking seppuku sequence in the beginning. Yeah. Because the guy has to use a wooden sword. Oh shit. Oh. To do it, and they show everything. I don't Dude. think it's a spoiler because it's like the first like 15 minutes. Yeah. But then the whole, it's like the slow grind to an epic climax. Wow. And it's kind of like a, yeah, I do gotta it's see kind that. of a mystery too. Huh. All right, we got a customer walking in. Oh. Yeah. Dee -dee -dee. What's that? So. Put that in your fucking wall. <laughs> 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 first Everything. when the customers come. Everything that we have said not to do out here. Has been, broken has been broken in a matter of seconds of it happening. I'm sorry. I banged on the uh, table. It's completely I banged on the table and I was the one that was harshest about it. Speaking of banging on tables, you ever see that? Oh, well, this one will have to wait. Okay. <laughs> this was so, just remind me banging on tables. Super Bowl update. It is now a minute and 51 seconds left. And Denver's 24. Denver's and 24. Kitty cats are 10. And 10. The kitty cats? <laughs> Uh, Denver, I believe, just did a, uh, uh, no, they haven't even used a timeout, so they still got all three timeouts. They're, I mean, like, they could probably just realistically run out the clock here in the next few downs, but, I mean, if you're that far ahead, you might as well try and score some more, because it's yeah. not like it's the Carolina. It's a fight, though. It's a fight. Like, a fight. you got a minute and 46 left. It's going to be a real fight for Carolina to come back from it. Yeah. See, it's not like basketball. A minute and 46 seconds is a lot of time. Yeah. A lot of time. But this is... With football, it's like you got all these guys just pretty much... All of guys, Carolina. You know, Carolina just used its last time out. I really want to know what it's like out there right now. <laughs> Cali? That's where they're doing it, right? I know, but... San Francisco. Carolina, yeah. I wonder how they're doing right now. They ain't doing shit. Everybody's probably going home already. Or <clears throat> no, dude. Home, are you kidding? The, the Carolina there. people are on the edge of their seat being like, please come back in the last few minutes. I have news for you, Carolina people. The Broncos are not the Dolphins. They're not going to turn over this kind of lead in the last two minutes. Which is what the Dolphins pretty much like always do. They're definitely going to be at work tomorrow because they're all going to be broke. <laughs> So anyway, let's hear this story. Well, yeah, speaking, speaking, of that, speaking of banging on tables, have you ever seen those pornos where the girl is just like fucking a table? No, but I've seen them fucking a pillow or like a bed. Apparently coach. that's the thing because I've seen a few of them yeah. where they're just rubbing up on, on inanimate the objects. Of a, yes, on the corner of a table. I've seen them do various other things. I haven't seen it with a table. Oh, it's always usually a table. I've seen with a rounded pillows. edge. I don't think this would be really <laughs> pleasant at mean, all. I've seen um, pillows and bedposts and chairs. <laughs> yeah. I pretty but I haven't pillows. seen a table. Yeah. Like they just like fold just up a, a yeah, just fold up a pillow and then just rub their clit Why on it. Why are you? <laughs> we had to do the dust. Like how you had to act it out. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's one of those times where we need the GoPro. Wait. <laughs> Science man. You ever watch David Cho's podcast? No, the, I didn't the, even know he had a podcast. He, has, he had a podcast with Asa Akira, the uh -huh. porn star, and like they they did um YouTube video versions of it where it was like a multicam setup and they yeah. have all like the like everybody's on camera and there's just this one camera 
focused on Asa and Kira's crotch. <laughs> just there the whole time, and she's just wearing that, like, underwear. I watched um, <laughs> David Cho's. I watched David Cho's twenty-four. Oh, well, I watched part of his twenty-four-hour live marathon that he was doing a while back. Like this was two years ago. Yeah. Uh, I remember pulling up on my laptop and playing Destiny while I was watching it. Oh. So I guess that was only. Like no, that had to be two right about two years ago now. Yeah. So, but yeah, that was weird. They had some weird shit. Like they did Bobby Lee and like eight different porn stars. There was complete, like basically complete fucking during yeah. that twenty four hours and yeah, shit. Yeah. Like by the end of it, there's like we ran out of shit to do. There's one episode. Taking all the drugs. There's one episode of the podcast where they did in a hotel room in Vegas, uh-huh. and they're recording it on this. That's where I got oh, like people use the Zoom for the podcast, and there's one point where they they actually got um, they called the like the like a high end hooker to come in on the podcast, and they had to talk, and they and then they had one of the hosts fuck the hooker in the room while they stuck this while they stuck the zoom recorder like underneath the door and recorded the whole thing and they just played the whole oh wow. my god oh. Fucking. Oh, that's <laughs> so crazy. you can hear like you hear everything and he can't he can't come <laughs> that's the whole thing for some reason oh uh, jesus yeah uh, okay so so tj man what you been up to music wise well, I've been going to HCC, doing their melee program. I'm in there for audio engineering. Oh, my God. I wanted yeah. to switch majors to that for some fucking reason. It's like, really fun. It's really? like, yeah, it's like right You want to learn how to... I want to oh. learn, like, a lot of ins and outs of it. I've been oh contemplating... Because there's a business side yes, of the, the, the program, too. Side. Yeah, exactly. So, how is that? Tell yeah. me about that. It's good. I mean, uh, second semester is, um, what do you call it? Right now, it's... Uh, Audio Engineering 1 right. and um, Scent, I think 112, I can't remember the numbers. Um, we're pretty much getting hands-on with the equipment now. Okay. And um, for Audio Engineering 1, we, uh, what do you call it, we're pretty much assistant um, engineers in mm-hmm. a sense. So right. like, we'll have the head engineer, which will be um, a student from Audio Engineering 2. And like, they just pretty much tell us how to do, uh, what to do and everything. Okay. Like, set up the mic stands and hook the mics up and everything That's like so that. so cool. But yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. We've they've just realized that this semester though they restricted it from bringing other people in. That you have to be like in the melee program to be in there, and like uh, we need performers that's... from our own class in order to do this. So it's like it um, sucks for bringing other people. In. How long is the program for? It's a two year. It's a two year program. Okay. So like uh, for both the business and the audio engineering. Program. So two years, and it's your associates, right? Yes, just yes. associates. From there, I could go to. Uh, west of Waku and actually do post-production stuff for okay. like video games and movies and everything like okay. that but for now i just want to work in a studio yeah for yeah. a person that's wanting to be in the studio and wanting to learn all the ins and outs like what would be the next step after graduating from the two-year program from after, after that getting a job yeah it could getting be a job. Yeah, getting a job like interning or um okay. i think actually um one of the classes for the last semester you'll ever be taking for it is that you um are required to do an intern Right? At right. Um, like one of the studios out here. Okay. Um, other than that, I mean, yeah, it's just like once, it, once it's done, you know, go out there and find a job, mm-hmm. you know. And a lot of, because uh, we're, a, I think it's, Mike Kerb is pretty much the one who helped out um, HCC with all that stuff. Like, they, they fucking hooked it up. Who's that guy? Me. He's, uh, I think he's from Belmont. So I've been looking into it. Um, I'm majoring in business and entrepreneurship at LCC. Mm-hmm. But it's like, for the past, I'd say almost, I guess the last school year, or even even during the summer, I was thinking about just switching. Because mm. that's what I mainly want to do. Is it music business? Yeah. But it's, it's just, I'm just like, oh, should I just do it? Or am I just doing oh. it because of this? But it's been on the back of my mind for a very, very long time. It's, it's not that bad. The, the te- they have two teachers that do the business side. Uh, one of them is Eric Lagrimas. If any mm-hmm. of you guys have heard of um, Pimpot, the mm-hmm. local band yeah. out here. Yeah, Eric Lagrimas is um, one of the members of that. I think he's the drummer. I can't remember. Yeah. But he's the one who teaches all the, the classes for, um, what do you call it, for the business side of Melee. And um, he's really cool, really laid back, uh, really well off too. He's got like a lot of music publishing. Um, and stuff like that. Oh, that's and, dope. That's dope. Yeah. What is one thing that you take that you take with you from, or what is one thing that you've taken from the course so far? From the course so far, 
Um, well, it's kind of like, because of like, I mean, a lot of the stuff I know is all self-taught through like YouTube or right. anything on the right. internet. Um, right now, it's, I've been like anything that's filling gaps. So a lot of it's just like hand-on, hands-on stuff in the okay. studio, as well as like further understanding like the equipment and how everything works. And stuff you like have that. any projects out already? Uh, me, mm -hmm. per se. Yeah, I've done a few stuff with, um, with Cozy and, and, um, and Jason oh, and stuff for Astronauts by Night. Um, <laughs> Tron just waved to us from across the counter. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> it's an audio medium, buddy. Congratulations, Peyton Manning. Oh, God. Congratulations. <laughs> Denver wins. I really uh, should have put money on that in Vegas. <coughs> uh, uh, when you realize how much money you could have got from this game, is. <laughs> but yeah. tell her, but tell her, I'm sorry, I didn't put money on it. Money, like, that's even funnier. <laughs> yeah. That's even funnier. So, funny story, mentioning uh, interns. Mm -hmm. uh, unpaid internships are technically illegal, but it's not enforced. Huh. Like, there's a part of the, the work law, work code and whatnot, that says that uh, having an internship uh, with in lieu of pay for things like college credit and shit like that mm -hmm. is not suitable and not uh, allowed. The thing is, it's been so deregulated that it's no longer enforced, even though it's still technically free. on the book saying it's illegal. It's free. I think yeah, I remember you, meant, you mentioned uh, that one night when we were all just hanging out. Oh, I didn't, I can't remember a lot of it, but we were probably watching uh, uh, Adam Conover on uh, Adam Ruins Everything. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's where right. I learned it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, it's fucking. Uh, you guys have direct TV. Oh, what's his name? I'm totally blanking on his name. Gimbal? Crowley. Crowley, Crowley yeah. Data because you guys have I'm just saying, I'm just putting that out there. You know, like, it was surprising when I was watching Firefly for the first time that he was, I watched Supernatural before, yeah. I watched Firefly, and then I was like, hey, look, he's in it. Like, yeah. He's the little, like, gangster mob part of the boss and everything. Does like he that. always play some kind of, like, like the back Not always, but uh, he's, he's a really good character actor, and I can't remember his actual name. Uh, he'll, he'll always be Crowley. Just, like, Stephen will always be separate. No, what the hell? Jason something Scott shit. Wait, what is this? Is this Supernatural? Jason Scott Lee. Oh, I was like, what the heck? I like how all his IDs are all names of rock stars. You know what I'm Yeah, duh. Uh -huh. That's so Because they like rock music. I know that, but I mean, I didn't like So they changed the channel to Supernatural now, and we're talking about Supernatural now, because the Super Bowl's not on. Never seen it. Never? It's actually really good. I yeah. enjoy it. Well, I don't know. They're on like the Toronto 11th would, like, season. Play episodes for me. Like he'd play yeah. clips for me and stuff. They're on like the 11th or 12th season. You know that he um, voiced Red Hood in one of the latest um, little animated videos? Uh, video. Crowley or? or uh, what's his name? Dean. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. I can't um, remember his name. The yeah. Actor. I but can't remember either now. Red Hood and I think it, I think it was the uh, Under the Red Hood or something. One of that little animated Was uh, it Dean videos. or Sam? I can't remember. I know it was one of them. Because I feel like Sam would do a good on uh, Red Hood. Anyway. Have you guys seen any of the Martin Shkreli interviews that he's been doing? I've seen bits of it uh, with the Congress thing. Where he's just like, mm, fuck you, Congress. You know, I, I, I watched his interview on Vice. Where the the Vice reporter like went to his apartment and they played chess and they just talked. Yeah. And then I watched when he was on um, fucking Breakfast Club. He was being interviewed by um, those cats. And you know what? He to me, he doesn't seem that bad of a guy. <laughs> he seems kind of, I don't know what it is. Like his whole thing with like hiking up the, hiking up the, the, the drug costs. Yeah. Saying that like it's not the, the patients that are going to be paying that $750 it's the pharmaceutical companies. And that if anybody reaches out to him, the, and they it's need not the it. pharmaceutical companies. It's the or whatever. It's the uh, the insurance companies. The thing is, when you hike the price up that much, the insurance companies are going to go. No, this patient isn't a priority, and we're not going to pay that for this. And so that patient's going to like like they're going to say like, oh well, you know, we're willing to pay the premium on these, but not on this because that premium is way too high. Mm. <clears throat> so, like, his theory, if you listen to just his side. It makes sense because, yeah, that, that extra money is supposed to go towards developing newer and better drugs and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Except the thing is the counterbalance to all that shit that's happening yeah. is the insurance companies are there to not lose money. 
And so when you hike up a drug or the price on a drug, they're going to cut the premiums for the patients and they're going to say, no, you have to pay more of this premium because this drug is more expensive. Mm. It, whenever you hike up the price of a drug, you're fucking over the, uh, the, the, the patients instead of – and you're not going to fuck over the insurance companies because they're just going to go, well, we don't cover this drug anymore. And – and the thing about it, the, the, oh, this whole thing about like giving it to patients for free if they contact him, and he has his whole system in place okay, to, to give uh, his shit for yeah, free. But like, <laughs> how many people are really going to get a hold of him? Like, how available is he really? Because there's, like, literally, if that was true, every patient who needs it would just fucking call. Also, him apparently, it's go, a very small well, percentage of people that actually need this medication. Yeah, to, it, that particular drug is. Yes, I agree. It's not a huge thing. It's it's, like it's in the for hundreds it's. Or, Thousands. Yeah, it's for people who have uh, – it was either HIV or AIDS or both, and they have another disease on top of it. I think it's AIDS because AIDS is when your immune system is already compromised. Yeah. And so once your immune system is compromised, you become susceptible to this other thing. Uh-huh. Uh, and that's what that drug is for. It's a rare case. Is, yeah, like it, unless your immune system is compromised, it's hard to get that disease in the first place. Uh, but still, the, 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 the point is – it's still a douche thing to do, uh, and it, it's already in a uh, an environment where Americans are already paying more for drugs than anyone else in the world. And the thing is, these drugs are often manufactured here or are owned, at least owned by companies here. And everywhere else in the world, in the in the industrialized world, in the the social, the the cultural world that like the the first world. I hate using that term, but in the first world is. They, they don't pay nearly the amount that we pay for drugs because they have regulations in place that say, no, these are for patients who need these things to survive. So they, they limit the amount that uh, companies can charge for them. And so, but there's no, there's, there aren't those regulations in America. So drug companies in America just go wild with the price. I'm trying to think of like why I find this dude so entertaining and it's kind of because he kind of doesn't give a fuck. Like, did you see that video of him? <laughs> With a bunch of like mass dudes like standing behind him saying he's gonna like slap ghost face killer or something like that. What? I I saw a screenshot. I didn't watch the whole video though. Oh, it just looks stupid. <laughs> like he just seems to ingratiate himself more and more to douchiness. Mm. Anyway, Did you see that Breakfast Club episode where they interviewed him? She. No, I didn't see it. I usually I'm usually like on it, but yeah, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Have like a shit ton of episodes to watch since starting my new job. It's just like driving me nuts. So back to our guest, man. Are you been working on music at all, or are you just been focusing on school? Um, I've been doing some little so, like side projects. Um, you got a secret thing going on. Yeah, a little secret thing. Can't talk about that. Or otherwise, yeah, it wouldn't be a secret. Okay. Well, we, we can. Yeah, we can totally talk about it without <laughs> talking the name. Of Breaking the... news. <laughs> got the scoops, Ben. Jojo dropping the new thing. Yeah. <laughs> thing. <laughs> Fire. Okay, ready? Go. Dropping new fire. <laughs> fire. <laughs> fire. Fire, fire. I don't know. It's just, um, He's just shitting stuff. fire out his ass like yeah. he ate Tabasco sauce straight from the bottle. The whole we're, thing. We're like, I'm, I'm, I'm not the I'm green Tabasco of, sauce, not the red one. I'm not a fan of Tabasco. I don't know why everybody likes to put it on everything. Sting rings like crazy. For anyone who doesn't know, a sting ring is when you take a shit and your, your asshole stings because you had spicy food. <laughs> Didn't know. Dude, yeah. Good. <laughs> that, yeah. That's actually a Tronism that he taught me from way Tron-ism. back in a... Of course Tron-ism. it is. Yeah, yeah from, from way back in like middle school. It's the originator of the sting ring. The, the sting sting ring. rings. I got sting rings. That means I ate spicy food and it's hit me back when I'm shitting. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, so, so Tron is half Thai and he grew up with... A, a ton of just half spicy blood. Spicy ass Thai. <laughs> you're you're Booty half Thai or um, um, like okay, so not okay. I thought your mom was full Thai, so okay, okay. So he's, he's part Thai, but he she she's she's Thai in culture, and so she she taught us Muay Thai and fed us fucking the spicy ass Thai food. Got a mean kick there, science Ben. What? A mean kick? Oh, you know, I kick like a fucking beast, dude. <laughs> like, I played hockey for fucking almost 10 years growing up, and I have, like, all my... I have no arms. I have all my power in my legs. So when I'm in a fight, I kick like a fucking beast. 
like nice. crazy. Like I could, I could like kick, kick a stool over really hard. <laughs> that's, a guy, that's a nice measure of your strength. Yeah. I guess. I blew all my flow <laughs> trying to do the sting ring bit, and yeah. it, uh, I have nothing. Drawing up blanks. So yeah. secret, secret. Yeah. So break the secret. Oh, Drop oh, the I, fire! Drop! I, don't know, I mean, I've been like, Give everyone uh, sting! Kick the stool! I've been working on music that's been just a lot of, um... A lot of percussive stuff. <laughs> a lot of percussive yeah. stuff? Yeah, a lot of, like... She's doing that bongo music or some shit? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> totally not, not. That's, um... Kind of has a little bit of a hip-hop-ish feel to it. Yes! Yeah! Yeah, yeah I like that. It's not like my oh, forte, <laughs> so that's why it's like it's a little like a learning process at the same time. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so bad. Well, so what made you want to like transition from this fuck from the fucking um trance? Well, to, I mean, uh, more hip hop you sound, I guess, or whatever you're trying to do. Well, um, I'm still kind of keeping a little of the trance. Stay cozy now. and watch him blush. <laughs> I don't blush. Well, I could. I lack the blood. I mean, I wanted to, like, kind of vampire. broaden, like, my, um, my reach, I guess, for what kind of music I make. Especially, too, like, when, with, with school going on, like, with going through the whole uh, melee program. Mm -hmm. You, um, if you're going to work in the studio, you got to be, like, willing to do any genre. Yeah. Because if someone comes in and it's, like, totally not your forte, well, yeah. then you're pretty much screwed. You don't know what the hell totally you're going to do. I like diversity. You know how it is. When I worked at the venue, I had to fucking mic up a Brazilian country band. <laughs> that was like 16 different instruments and I was like what the fuck am I doing like I don't know how to fuck but it was actually pretty dope man oh, yeah, I forgot what the name of the instrument that they use in capoeira is oh a cello I, I no it's like a stick with a thing on it it's a stick with one string yeah. and the oh, string I'm, has about, this book. I'm sorry I'm thinking about the music video that you're showing me though yeah I'm sorry but though there's this there's a bunch of those sticks last yeah. night when I went to the box that acts like a kick and a snare I don't know what it's called but it's like this little box with like a, there's a little hole in yeah, the side of like it yeah, it yeah. Like yeah they had that shit too the one that they sit on yeah, yeah, it's like they, they sit on it, and it's like depending on how you hit it, the yeah. box, like it'll like either there's be like a, a kick sound a, or like a snare sound. I went to the Pow Wow Hawaii kickoff party last night in Kapa'ako, and they had like a capoeira demonstration for some reason, and there was a bunch of those sticks with strings in the box with yeah. all in it. And it was and they funny. Sound really cool. It was funny because mostly white people in this capoeira demonstration. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> I did. I did. I did. No, nope, there was one black guy. He, he, I did. The black guy. The black guy was on the box duty. Yeah. On the box. I did. Drumming. I did capoeira <laughs> when I was growing up out here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all white people. Yeah. Apparently. Well, I had, I had a, I think I think he was Jamaican actually, not Brazilian, but he was my instructor. He was really cool, and I was actually telling them this in the car ride over here. I was like, oh, when Taco Bell came out with the chalupa, he thought that they made up that word, so he made up a move. Where he does like a back, uh, uh, a back roundhouse, and then it turns into uh, a horizontal. Where he's in the air horizontal, and he sp spins three times horizontally, and then lands. And he's like, "I call that the chalupa, because if Taco Bell can make up a word, I'm just gonna steal it." And then he found out that the chalupa, the chalupa is a real thing. <laughs> The chilapa. 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 Yeah, then he found out the chalupa is a real thing, and then he's like, It's like Arnold oh. Schwarzenegger trying to say chalupa. Chilapa. <laughs> well, somebody had to make that word up. Yeah. Chalupa? You know, yeah. so he's just like, you know, he's just really ahead of the game right now, just making shit up. Eventually, you know, if he keeps at it, that word will actually mean something to thousands of people and become incorporated into the language. Well, I mean, it kind of already means something to millions of people in America and around the world. It means... A taco wrapped in a soft taco. No, I'm talking about your, the guy that made up a word. Like, oh, I know. But like, gonna... I think he has since like moved to Brazil or something. Like he, I, I haven't heard from him, and I don't remember his name. But like, he's like long gone, and I don't think he like cares or does anything with that anymore. Mm. He just like is in the capoeira session, and just like flips at you, and you're like, holy shit, what are you doing? <laughs> so back to TJ, you started going down the hip-hop route because you felt like you needed to diversify your sound and yeah you have mainly. to because in the studio you gotta be you gotta a be little a little diverse bit, yeah i guess because yeah, i mean I, with my background i was the uh, i was born and raised on rock music man i like yeah. I, I've, I've downloaded spotify 
And like I've been having so much fun with that thing. Like yeah, I'm restocking on all my old rock music and everything and um no, it's great. Like but I mean like I came from a rock background and also from uh producing since pretty much two thousand ten. Yeah. Was, so with both like rock music and EDM, oh. like I have listened to some Japanese and Korean music here and there, but mostly it's just like rock and EDM, and I don't yeah. have anything of that like of that sort like hip hop or or R and B or anything like that up my alley. Yeah. So it'd be like I was like, hey, well, I mean, as, from a producer standpoint, you know, that's something I can do on the computer, put a few drums together, slap slap a beat. So have you been like listening to more hip hop recently, um, just to try and get that sound down or something? It's uh, right now like it's kind of. It's my next goal because right now I'm just so focused on um, school and revamping my my rock music collection. Yeah. I just like I'm like so focused on those two things right now. It's like okay, I want to get all this done, yeah. and then after that, like when I when I get more free time, which I'm probably going to be seeing towards like the last few semesters, the last two semesters, probably be more I look diving into some hip hop and everything. Cool, man. You know what you should do before you really dive into hip hop is like go back to the roots and like really dive deep into jazz just for like a month and then like pop oh, out yeah, and do no, like a, a year of hip hop. Yeah, like, um, I know like when I listen to jazz, like I could, I could sit there for hours listening to it, but like I don't know anything off the top of my head. Like who's this? Who should I listen for? What are some good artists? Jimmy the Cat. Oh, that one in my because you kind of yelled it in my face. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> he's, he's one of my favorite like jazz artists from back in the day. <laughs> that was one of the guys that my dad introduced me to. I loved it. It was good shit. No, like you like... You, Actually, it's not called Jimmy the Cat. His album was called The Cat. <laughs> like you I repeat after me, was. and then now you're... I just put on my sunglasses, and then she's put on her sunglasses. I was like, are we putting on our sunglasses now? I guess so. Well, they don't have sunglasses. No. I do. It's you guys just, aren't cool enough. No. You can't be a part Jimmy of Smith. Jimmy Smith. And the the album that I listened to all the time was called The Cat. The Cat. Yeah. Anyway, uh, speaking of jazz albums, I actually played this for you the other night. Uh, you posted this, and I actually went and bought it like right after you posted this. One of my favorite comedians, H. John Benjamin. Oh, yeah. posted, oh my God. It's so awesome. Posted it. He made a jazz album, and he doesn't know how to play it's piano. so funny, dude. It's great because it's an eight. Uh, it's an eight-track album. <laughs> Two of the tracks are skits. Four, or, uh, f- yeah, four of the tracks are uh, titled "I Don't Know How to Play Jazz Piano" parts one through four. <laughs> the first skit's great. I love the first. The, skit. the very oh, the opening okay. skit. The opening skit is him arranging a meeting with the devil and then meeting with the devil trying to sell his soul so that he can learn how to play jazz piano, and the devil tells him. No, no, you have to have, like, a little bit of skill, and then I can make you a master. Like, you can't come to me with nothing and then be like, yeah, just expect to be a jazz uh, jazz piano master now. Like, that's not how it works. You have to be at least a little good at piano, and then I can turn you into a master, so I'm not going to buy your soul. And so he's like, but I have to make this album tomorrow. I don't have time to, like, spend five years, learn a little bit of piano to be mediocre at it, and then come back to you and sell my soul so I can be a master. I need to do it tomorrow. And he's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. It's... It's not going to happen. And then so, like, <laughs> then you listen to three songs in a row of really good jazz, and then him in the background and in the foreground sometimes just, just like, keys. pressing keys, <laughs> like, hitting random keys. Oh, and my the, God. The, the, the thing is, the best part about it is you can tell, like, it's not just like he is trying to sound bad. He's really trying to do good jazz piano, but he has no idea what he's doing. Oh that that was the crazy part about it, I thought. Like, like, like you can tell that he's trying to be a good jazz pianist. <laughs> like, but every he time can't. he hits a note, it just starts cracking up. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that was like listening to it. There was like some of the parts were like, oh wow, that kind actually of fit. Well, for, that well some of them you can kind of tell that like the the the, the, ja- the other jazz musicians are trying to follow him. Sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Like, he has a great jazz band playing with him, so, like, it kind of works while it doesn't at all. Yeah. And I've actually, I've been saying this about it. It's like, that is what would have happened if jazz went through a punk phase. <laughs> That's a yeah. good way to put it. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. That's a great... <laughs> so, anyway. Oh, man. Yeah. What is it? I don't know. All I seen was T and I was like, oh, oh okay. Now it makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I'm with that. <laughs> Stingrays. I said stingrings. Stingrings. That's the title for this episode. Stingrings. Because they're gonna leave, it's gonna leave a bad feeling in your stomach. <laughs> that's, that's how horrible this episode 
start it off. When, I, when you said like Tronism earlier, like I was like, for some it's reason Tronism. I pictured like wow. Jason with like a Fu Manchu kind of thing. With, like, I mean, like, like Balbism. Yeah. Technically, <laughs> so, so Tron's name before he was Tron was Lickner. And so technically it's a Licknerism because Lickner was like Tron isn't known for being the, the airhead dumbass that says stupid shit and does stupid things. Lickner was known for being the airhead idiot that does those things. I see. Yeah. So it's more of a Licknerism than a Tronism. Licknerism. Yeah. Licknerism. Lickner. Like how do you spell Lickner? Like liquor, but with a ner. Ah, I was totally thinking about liquor. Like you? Oh, liquor sounds good. Hey, yeah, there's I have a pantry like right. Around. Oh, we were just like L I Q U N O R. I'm a little drunk. Are you? Of course you are. Yeah. Oh, couldn't tell. You hide it well. What, what is this now? What are you? You got cast a spell? Yep. Okay. Yeah, you're more drunk than you think. Speaking of spells. Cast Very of much so. Very much. <laughs> What's up? Oh, Witcher 3, man. I fucking love oh, that yeah. game, dude. You got back into it? Yeah, I went and I bought like it back and I started playing it again. It's so good. So <laughs> I thought I was at the part that was essentially More the end, now, but now you're yeah. telling me that it's yeah, so apparently not, like only halfway. Thing. From what I read online from like, because I've been watching a lot of Witcher videos and reading like stuff on the but Witcher. Does, but does that count like only if you're... Only if you just like ran through and did all the main quests, because like I've been doing all the side quests. Like I like I literally the only thing that I have left in my side quests are a couple <clears throat> of wishers contracts that are like well the thing that 10 I read, levels ahead of me. The thing that I read said that oh once you get Siri, that's like the halfway point of the main story. Line. Of the main story, like oh shit, this game is amazing. Yeah. So I'm you, about to get Siri. You didn't play? Have you played The Witcher three? Nope. I don't have a system. Oh, I thought you had a PS4. No. No, we were planning We were saving up to buy him one for oh. a birthday at some point, but then, like, I lost my job, and Tron didn't get the promotion that he was supposed to, where you get the big payday. Oh. So, because yeah. they canceled that program, sadly. I know, and it sucks, because now I just finally got internet installed in my own room now. So it's, like, my own router and everything, kind of, like, labeled and everything, my own password. It's pretty cool. I'm, like, enjoying it. That's the first time I've Is ever it Wi-Fi? Had yeah. Why haven't you told me the last time I was there so I could get clearer well, Wi-Fi just, when I go back I just got it done, like, right after the day after. My mom comes out with, like, this 50-foot LAN cable. And I'm like, where the hell was that? And she's like, I don't know. It's just sitting in my room somewhere. It's like, <laughs> maybe we can plug it into the other port. So I, like, plugged it in, ran it out her window, stapled it all along the side of my house, running into the room and, like, in the back. Oh, wow. And now I have my own little router now set up. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. So it's, and it's it's been great. I've been, like, it's cool, too, because, like, I can... Since I don't have cable in my room, since they cut it, last time I had a roommate, I've had to like get out of my room, go around through the backyard, into the sliding door, into my living room, yeah. and I can I, I get better signal from there, from my my uh, oh, sorry, from my router <laughs> than um, than the router that's actually inside the house. Yeah. yeah. So it's like it's great. I'm like I, I, I can just do whatever the hell I want, and I get Wi-Fi. I'm like oh Wi-Fi and on TV like oh, yep, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I did a similar thing because my. My like office area is upstairs in my house, and the <clears throat> the router is really far away. And so, like the first thing I did was I literally got two Wi-Fi extenders so that I would reach there. Yeah. And then uh, Cozy actually turned me on to uh, what is it called? Power. Power line. Power line internet. <laughs> oh, you go that? through the go the through the electrical outlet? of the house. Yeah. And so then I did that, and now I'm hardwired for everything in my office. Yeah. I originally was gonna do that, but um, there's already like I guess there's. <laughs> Something got set up with my brother um, having his own um, cable thing that they're they're already running a line through our power and stuff like that. And if I was to do that with a her line, it would like I'd get a messy signal. Mm. I wouldn't get it like a clear. Um, well, still you got you got the router, you got the ra the RAN router now, so yeah, hey, works. Yeah. But since the game's over, this store is gonna start getting more busy. So I think <laughs> we should probably wrap this up a little bit early. Okay. Yeah. 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 So, she you got keeps anything to you when I look at her? No, because when you looked at me, I looked that way. So I looked back at you, but you went, you looked back that way, and I was like, okay, so you're not. <laughs> Stop. I don't think we have. You have anything to plug? Oh. Uh, I mean, just. <laughs> Uh, keep an eye out. There might be there might be some good music coming out within that this year. We're gonna um, assume I can that give you something to plug. We're gonna assume that we did the plugs in the pre episode to this episode. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, wouldn't it be weird if Bill Murray showed up right now? <laughs> you know, I'm gonna say it again because the beat like totally <laughs> fucked that up. Wouldn't it be weird if Bill Murray showed up right now? I, with the with the door like 
<laughs> oh, we could have played it off like the beeping right. with Bill Murray walking in when. Ah. Oh. Well, That'd be really Tron, funny. yell something. No, you can't. Fox. Louder. <laughs> say something else then. Just say it really loud. Well, you know, it'd be really weird no, if, like, that is, Christopher. Shut up, he can't hear your own thing. <laughs> say something. Okay. 